We're back here at Loftus Road, a fresh new show. Pitch is looking fresh, season is upon us, and the range report is here. Once again, it wouldn't be a QPR podcast without the one and only Andy Sinton, who'll be joining us every week as we give you an insight into life here at W12, at a new training complex in Heston. We'll be following the trials, the tribulations, and hopefully the successes here at QPR as Gareth Ainsworth sides take on the Skybet Championship this year. We'll be bringing you the insight from the Community Trust, from the women's team, from the development squad and the under 18s as we have it all at the Rangers Report. Listen and watch in many different ways, all available on our SoundCloud, our qpr.co.uk, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and on our, all our social media channels, so you can get your QPR fix wherever you are. And listen to the amazing tones of me and my co-host here, Andy Sinton. Since here we are back, Lofters Road, once again, the season is underway, or will be underway very soon. Looking forward to it? I am, you know, uh, I have to say, and I think I share the, the, the views of everyone connected with the club. Couldn't wait for last season to finish. You know, the strange season for many reasons, but that's, that, that, that's gone now. So, uh, so yeah, go away, get your break, and you always look forward to the new season starting, and it's just round the corner. You're looking very tanned. There's a, there's a glow coming from you since. Have you had a nice summer? I uh, had a, well, had a lovely summer, got a couple of weeks away, I had one week in uh, Portugal and um, I had a week in, um, in Rhodes. Uh, fortunately, I uh, got back before the, uh, the fires and everything that's been well reported started to unfold. So quite fortunate in that, uh, in that, in that sense, Rhodes, beautiful island, beautiful people. Um, and really sad to see what's, what's gone on over there and thoughts and prayers are with everyone who was involved in uh, in the fires and just hope everyone was safe. We're back here at Loftus Road in London. Eyes now switching, the new kit is out and everything, we're seeing it in front of us. You must be excited, ready for the start of the season. Well, you know, you, there's, there's, there's points in the summer where you, you, uh, you look forward to fixture release day is always one because that brings um, in the focus, the new season's still six or seven weeks away. And as you go, you know, you, you see the boys getting back to pre-season, you, you, you follow the games, albeit from afar. Um, kit release, which looks great, you know. Um, and as I say, then you, you, you're on the countdown and I always look forward to a new season. I can't wait for the first game of the season, home or away. Uh, and this one's no different. How have you been getting your sport fix over the summer? What keeps your interest? The ashes, the golf, the tennis. Everything. I'm a massive sports fan, just probably like yourself, you know, but um, love my cricket. I think it's been a really exciting series, you know, um, right up till the, the end of it yesterday, you know, with the Stuart Broad uh, creating a little bit of theatre, if you like, having announced his retirement. So uh, so that was great. Big golfer and a golf fan. So, you know, you, you, you watch those tournaments, Wimbledon. I thought that was brilliant this year. You know, you say the young kid, well, I say kid, you know, he's, he's world number one, Alcaraz. Um, it's the first time I've really seen him play and, you know, what a talent, what a, what a superstar he's going to be. Um, you know, the final itself to beat a true great of men's tennis and Djokovic in the way that he did, brilliant. Got the Women's World Cup. Uh, so yeah, the summers. We managed to get your football fix with the Women's World Cup. Yeah, I've been watching that now, haven't we? Been watching a bit of that. You know, that's getting to, t towards the interesting sort of stages, and uh, England are right there in it. Um, you know, every time Chloe gets the Chloe Kelly gets the ball, QPR seems to get a mention, which is always nice to hear. Isn't it? Well, you know, I think the whole nation got behind what happened a couple of years ago, and uh, as I say, as this tournament sort of unveils and develops, you know, let's get behind them. Can they bring this one home? Um, be a big ask, but you know, no reason why not. But yeah, love my sport. But you know, I've just mentioned a few things. Put that behind us. The big one for me is uh, Saturday when we when when the championship kicks off. You know, um, yeah, can't wait. We draw the line on last season. The line has well and truly been drawn. But just a chance to really reflect. Now there's been a period of break, and we can 
look back on what was a difficult period for the club, but we got through it. There was light at the end of the tunnel. And is it safe to say optimism is back? Is that a fair? Well, it always is. You know, once uh, I'll say it again, I couldn't wait for last season to finish. You know, from where we were to where we um, were with two or three games to go. Um, you know, from being top of the league and everything going well, manager leaving and the circumstances that he left, new manager coming in didn't quite happen. Gareth coming in and, um, you know, other than beating Watford at home, um, had to wait a long time till we sort of secured our survival with a brilliant win up at Burnley um, and winning up at Stoke. So, yeah, um, strange, strange season, strange se uh, season for everyone, everyone behind the scenes, supporters, Players, I'm not making excuses for whatever it was, but yeah, yeah, get rid of last season, let's move on. And the first start of that was the opening of the new training ground. That sort of set a precedence, didn't it, straight away? The pre-season is here, up and running, come on, let's get to it. Well, the training ground, as I say, it's been a long time in the, uh, in the making and, and credit to you know, everyone behind the scenes who's made it happen. You know, the owners in particular, but you know, the, the, the bondholders as well who've, who've made it happen. Um, I've sort of watched it slowly develop over, you know, since the start to build. It's an exceptional facility. It's, uh, it really is. A, it, it's first class. Um, will make a difference, already is making a difference, but it's... Um, we were honoured to be joined by Jerry Francis, who officially unveiled it as well, and it, he spoke about the importance of it and how much of an impact that will have. Well, it's brilliant to have someone like Jerry, you know, with his standing at the club. Jerry came through our academy, uh, played in our best ever team, you know, was captain of that team, captain his country at 23, he's managed the club twice. So I think that was fitting to have someone like Jerry come back and open such a brilliant facility. Jerry was blown away by it. I thought he spoke wonderfully on the day and I think it was really well received by everyone who see it unfold and, and now that's real. I've been up there a couple of times. I'm still finding my way around it's it's but it's it's just a it's just a brilliant facility that can only and hopefully help this club move forward in, uh, in a, years to come. As a player how important is a facility? It's very easy for me and the media team to promote it very well and uh, this is amazing but the, when the nitty-gritty gets down to it how important is it for the lads that were walking in and this brand new facility? I think uh, I think it's massive I don't think you can underplay it I think uh, you know going back to my time as a player uh, at various clubs we always sort of hired facilities if you like and you it's not quite your own but this is this is ours um, you know you can't fail to be impressed if I'm a player now and I'm I've got a couple of clubs to sign for and it's a little bit in the balance that'll probably be the tipping uh, difference if you like when I just because that shows the club are investing in the future and want to move forward and uh, that's just a it's just a tremendous facilities the pitches are immaculate you know we're just looking over our shoulder at Loftus Road you know the pitches at the training ground are equally as good Everyone can train together. It's uh, it, it's almost like the club coming together up at the the training facilities rather than being separated. And uh, everyone's got a role to play. But no, well done to behind the scenes for getting it done. Hasn't been easy, but we got it done. Thanks to all the bondholders who made it happen. And as I say, let's hope that can be a, a real point where the club can start to move forward again. And we're already seeing some of the positive impacts that he's having, Asmir Begovic, for example, mentioning it as a real reason. And he's signed for Rangers, he's obviously come some big clubs. He also played at Chelsea and got to the facilities at Cobham. Coming to now QPR, having a bit of a step up for him. It's quite nice that people are mentioning that, isn't it? Well, someone like, uh, you know, um, Begovic will have, you know, if you look at the clubs he's played for, he will have, he will have got used to training facilities like that so when you're looking to sign a player but someone of his quality and stature and experience if you like he would have had a good look at that and go you know what okay I'm joining something that's moving forward so uh, now you can't overplay the importance of a really good training ground with the facilities that it's got now the players have just got to use those facilities as best they can to improve on a daily basis and move themselves forward as well. One player that last year was sort of a standout in what was, as we mentioned, a relatively poor season was Samfield. Picked up 
a number of accolades, player of the year, supporters player of the year, junior hoops player of the well, year. Him. I caught up with him as well at Heston, but just reflect on him briefly before we catch well, up with him. First of all, Sam, uh, as, as, you, as you said, won all the awards and for me quite rightly so. I think in, I've got to say it again, a really difficult, horrible season. I think he was the one consistent performer. I think he was the standout performer. I think he was the one that you could see every time he took to the pitch, you, you probably knew what you were going to get from Samfield. You know, Sam now is he's racked up over 150 appearances. Is it 100 or almost 100 for QPR? Um, I think he's well thought of, obviously by the fans, by his teammates. Um, I think he's got leadership qualities as well, having been given the captain's armband um, a couple of times. And I think he should have took a, a and would have took a great deal from last year. But Sam would be the first one to to admit, you know, he he's still learning, he's still developing, he's still got areas to improve. But no, he's a great kid. The, the the small bits I've come into contact with him, he's he's a really likable young lad. Wants to do well. I say young lad. He's 25 now, you know. But um, now we're pleased to have him, and he's going to be a big big player for us this season. But links us perfectly to our interview with Sam Field. I sat down with him at Heston and reflected on last season, but also the importance of this year and how he can build on what was a relatively strong campaign for him. Sam, reflecting on last season, first of all, overall for the team wasn't necessarily one we'll look back with a lot of fondness, but for you personally, the few accolades you picked up at the end of last year, is that something that you're proud of? Uh, yeah, definitely, obviously. Um it's the team first and I want the team to do well but um, yeah, there's accolades that are nice personally and um, look, that just comes with me doing my job for the team so look, I appreciate it from both the players and the, and the supporters, it's, it's, a, it's a nice feeling but um, I think it's a better feeling for everyone if the team does well and uh, you know we've got a lot of things we need to work on and we've been working on so hopefully this season is, uh, ends in a much more positive manner. What could you sort of draw from last season to sort of bring into this year to sort of what can you improve on and what can be different? Um, lots of things, lots of things. Um, it's not always just on the pitch, off the pitch is just as important. Um, you know, we've this new training ground I think has made a massive difference and we've got to make the most of this. And, um, you know, there's there's lots of areas, both technically, tactically, Physically, you know, we need a, we need the squad to stay fit. We need the whole team this year. It's a big effort from everyone. Um, and then performances-wise, people have to step up. We have to step up individually and collectively. Um, I think we rolled over way too easy a lot of games last season, and I know the manager doesn't want that at all this season. And look, it, you might have an odd one, but it, it's not as consistent as it was last season. So yeah, there's loads to work on. Um, but that excites me actually, and I hope hopefully it excites the rest of the team because. It's just a chance to show you we've improved and how we're, how we're you know, trying to grow as a group. And you mentioned that word, consistency. That's something that the supporters sort of saw from you last year. We always kind of knew what we were going to get from the Samfield. Is that something to pass on to the other players this year? And um, Yeah, definitely. I don't, you know, I've still got a lot of my own things I need to work on and I'm fully aware of that. It's, um, yeah, I think that's one of my strengths is my consistency. And, um, look, different players require different things. The attackers might be 10 out of 10 one week, 2 out of 10 the next, but um, I think especially for someone in my position, consistency is key. So, look, I, I'll try and keep doing that and try my best to keep doing that. Um, from the squad point of view, I think it's collectively as a team to find a consistent uh, style of play, performance level, physical level. I think as soon as we do that and get some rhythm into each, into ourselves and uh, performances then uh, hopefully the rest will take care of itself but um, yeah I wouldn't you know I, I don't see myself as a, as a, shi a sorry, shining light uh, you know I just do my job for the team and if everyone does their job collectively we'll be fine. We're speaking ahead of the Watford game but there's been quite a few changes you mentioned the training ground there's been some players brought in experienced players in Jack Colback and Asmin Begovic in particular how has that impacted the squad and what's going to be happening this year? I think it's really good. Like I said, the training ground's brilliant and I think those just those older heads will just help this younger group, um, just guide it, you know, it doesn't always have to be words, just by example sometimes and I think they'll just help and, um, you know, people like that, they've got great pedigree and, you know, we'll be soaking up all we can from those type of people because they've had good careers and uh, there's a reason why they've had good careers and we need to learn off them. You mentioned learning off 
Jack Colbeck, as we say in particular, is that you see it as competition or is it someone now you look up to and sort of can learn from him? Uh, both. Similar position, isn't it? Yeah, both. Uh, you know, uh, everyone wants to play. Uh, Jack wants to play, I want to play. Everyone wants to play in midfield. So um, I think it's good for the team. I think it's healthy. Um, and I think competition is something that you shouldn't be scared of. It's It makes me better, it makes him better, it makes the team better. So, um, yeah, I'll be looking to obviously take what I can off him and hopefully play a lot with him as well. You mentioned this pre-season, it's just coming to an end now. What's been your take on the last few weeks here at Heston? Uh, pre-season is an interesting one. You don't you don't know where you are till the season starts. And um, look, you can, I know it's not, some results haven't been ideal in pre-season and I'm fully aware of that. Um, but it was, you know, we need to put it right in the season. And I'd rather, much rather us have a poor pre-season and a great season than the other way around. So. It's one of them where you don't know until it uh, kicks off. So we'll see on Saturday. Hopefully, I'm, I'm confident in the group. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to get going. I'm sure everyone else is. We're heading to Vicarage Road on Saturday. The fans are, are in their numbers once again. They'll be joining us at Hertfordshire. Is that something that you're really pleased of with the fans and the enjoyment that they get out of coming to watch QPR? Yeah, definitely. Look, we understand there's probably not been too much to cheer about, especially towards the end of last season. So. Honestly, that means a, means a lot to us and we need to do them proud more than anything. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Saturday already and hearing them. And yeah, obviously this club means a lot to a lot of people and we've got to, you know, make sure that we play for this shirt for a reason. So, um, yeah, come Saturday and come every game in the season, we've got to make sure that we, you know, obviously we might have bad games, but if we're just there in terms of attitude, well, you know, that's all the fans can really ask for, I think. Amazing, Sam. Thank you for No worries, no worries. Sam Field, he has a big role to play again this season, is that fair to...? Very much so, you know, build on what he did last year, individually, collectively, I've already said he's a, he's a voice, uh, he's got leadership qualities, um, he's at a good age, um, he's now experienced in terms of the amount of games he's, he's played both in his career and, and here, and I think he's one that can go from strength to strength. Can he influence others around him? That's probably the next part of his development, um, but yeah, delighted to have him. Good, good season last year, and hopefully a lot more to come from Sam. And the signing of Jack Colbeck is someone that's out from the outside may seem as a competition for Samfield, but is that someone that he can really learn from and become a force in our midfield? Because we've had departures, so Stefan Johansson, for example, so Jack Colbeck can really fill that hole. That well, Jack's come in, um, you know, um, Good player, good career. Uh, what has he got? Over 400 appearances. That's Sunderland, Ipswich, Newcastle. Lots of games for Notts Forest. Um, Scored a goal here. For, I remember him yeah. scoring in the 94th minute uh, to, to get a point for Forest a few years ago. But, you know, he'll come in with leadership qualities, know-how, experience, both of the level, what it takes, getting around that dressing room, impart his knowledge and the way he trains and his professionalism on, on others. And, um, as I say, Competition with Sam, maybe they'll play together, maybe they'll play, maybe there will be competition. But, you know, as a player, I used to welcome new signings coming to the club, whether they played in my position or not, because it was a case of, OK, I'll roll my sleeves up. Um, I'll either play with you or if you're coming to take my place, you're going to have to play really well because uh, I'm going to really up my game. So that's good and that's what you want as a manager and that's what you want within your squad. You want competition for places. You don't want complacency where someone will just automatically play. Um, and if they're playing well, they will automatically play. But that's what you want on a daily basis. Can't afford to, to take your eye off the ball, foot off the gas. Every day matters, every game, no matter who it's against, home or away, uh, friendly, pre-season friendly, league game, cup game. Every game for me is important. So we've had, we've mentioned the opening of the training ground. We had the opening ceremony. Then the next day, that's it. The lads were in. Gareth Ainsley had his, his boys in, ready for pre-season. They did a bit of testing, and then the following week, really got onto the grass and started the running again. What is pre-season for you? What's it about? What's the importance of it? Pre-season for me is getting ready for the first game of the season. You've got that six weeks. You've got your program, which I'm sure the lads will have been given. So you get your downtime, you go away and you get a bit of sun on your body or you spend a bit of family time, but I'm sure there would have been individual programmes dished out so that when you come back, you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from a really, really good level. But pre-season for me is about um, you know, individually being ready for 
this year, August the fifth, when we when we when we play what uh, Watford collectively being ready, cohesive, know exactly your roles, uh, and they'll change from game to game and during the season. But you know, know what your role is, what you're going to contribute, and uh, and bringing it all together, ready for the first game of the season. Perth was my highlight of pre-season, but the kit was launched. What do you make of it? A bit retro, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit of a throwback. Yeah, great. You know the uh, uh, the, the red and black stripes, Dennis the Menace one. Um, yeah, I really like that. I've got some fond memories, albeit it's it's been tweaked a little bit. But the the red and black stripes, you know, had some of my great QPR memories um, in that strip, in that top, uh, playing in a great team. Uh, a certain think... Man City goal comes to mind, doesn't it, when you see Dennis the Menace and Andy Sinton in the same sentence? Yeah, it's one that's um, it's one that's shown quite a lot, I think, because of the significance. It was the first Monday night, but um, yeah, a, a goal I remember, uh, remember fondly. You know, that was a great team that I, that I played in with a great manager uh, under Jerry Francis. Really great times for me and the club and and that team in particular. But to wear that kit, you know, just throws back throws back some really special memories. I hope the current team can you know, wear that with the pride that we did and hopefully can have the success. And the home kit has, has a bit of a, an 80s yep. feel, doesn't it? Based yep. on the early 80s, mid yep. 80s. Yeah, as I say, that's you, going back. Great, great team that was as well, 82, you know, the cup final, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I was going to say, you don't really remember the 80s since, but um, here we are talking about it passionately. Well, I remember, <laughs> you know, I was just leaving school and starting out my journey. And I remember watching QPR play uh, play Spurs in a cup final, um, you know, very unlucky, uh, but again, some great players as this club have had, you know, this club, I think we forget the history of the club, um, what we've had at the club, the the great players who've represented the, the club and whether they've gone on to win things or represent their countries, etc., etc. You know, that's, that's sort of, We've set the forever ours up five or six years ago, and suddenly when a lot of the players who represented this 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 great club come back, it sort of makes you realise how how good a history, how good of players, how good teams that we've had, and uh, in recent times. Reflecting on the old players, talking about the new ones now, we've had a few signings this summer, new arrivals. We mentioned Asmir Begovic, Jack Colbeck, the return of Paul Smith, Ziad Larkesh, Morgan Fox. Just to name a few, it's, what's your take so far on the signings? There's been a blend, hasn't there, of experience? Well, there was lots, lots left at the end of last season. You know, a lot of loan players went back, etc. A couple, a couple of, of left, you know, Senny and Rob Dickey sold on. And, uh, you know, we wish them well for, for the future at the new clubs. Not when they play us, by the way, but um, we wish them well in general. But, you know, um, to get Esmir Begovic with his experience, was he 60, 63 games for his country? You've only got a look at the list of clubs he's represented in recent times. Bags of experience, the couple of pre-season games he's been given the captain's armband. So he'll be a leader in the dressing room. Um, let's hope he, he turns out to be a really good signer because he's a good goalkeeper. He's had a wonderful career. Next chapter of his career is with us. Let's hope he's successful. Um, you know, we've, 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 we've mentioned Jack, uh, Paul Smith coming back. Paul, someone two, three years ago when he was here, I quite like, played in we know what we're gonna get position, Smith, bundle of energy. I think sometimes, and I spoke to Paul, I think he recognises possibly had to go away to mature and to, to improve as a player. Um, and now he's back. I know he hasn't played too many minutes in pre-season, which is a shame. But um, yeah, delighted to see Paul come back. And uh, as I say, we're wishing him well. Morgan Fox comes in uh, with experience. You know, um, play a couple of positions in the back four or back five, whatever we're going to do. So we're delighted to have him. Um, young one, one thing, sorry to I was going to say Young Ziad, you know, he's at the different end, uh, end of the scale in terms of his career. But he, he had a really promising spell at Barnsley last year. Um, you know, played in big games, so that'll stand him in good stead. Competition for places with Kenneth, um, or if we're going to play a different way, you know, could one of them play further up a little bit? So, uh, 
So yeah. One thing that Gareth Ainsworth has implemented is you speak to the new signings, don't you, after they arrive, and really implement what QPR means to the supporters thing and show our history and highlight the club. Well, I, I, I think that's quite important. And you know what, the players who've signed should, have, should know that. Uh, and one, they'll have been sold up by the management and the coaching sort of stuff. But, you know, just a, a different voice to, to reiterate who we are, what we are, um, you know, what makes, for me, this place special, what our fans, I wouldn't even say want, I'd say demand. Um, and if they get that, fans will stay with you on the on the journey. You know, you don't want to lose games, but if you're having a right go, if you're playing for the badge, if you're appreciating the fans for what they what they give the team, because I thought last year our fans were absolutely magnificent, um, home and away. So, uh, so yeah, it's a pleasure to to be able to speak to the players and just reinforce the ethos of the club as we move forward. And one thing that Gareth Haynes was very strong in is unity, team togetherness. And out in Austria, we saw team bonding exercises. We saw Lyndon Dykes and Taylor Richards tackling the high ropes. <laughs> um, the locals found it very amusing, as we did as we were filming it. But it was, there was a moral behind it. There was a point behind it, wasn't it? Then team bonding being the core of that. Have you ever sort of done an exercise like that? Plenty of stuff, you know. I um, remember going away with, uh, with Spurs one year with Christian Gross. He took us up into the Alps and we're doing, I think it's called Canyon and where you start at the top. Somehow they get you to the top and you, you've got to find your way down and sometimes you, there's challenges you have to overcome. There's obstacles in your way. You've got to do things that you certainly get you out of your comfort zone and all of that, you know, and that's, that's, that's a big part of pre-season. Clubs go away now where you're, you're pretty much living 24-7 with each other, you're bonding, you, you, you're growing together. Um, that'll stand you in good stead. But for me, the most important part of pre-season is getting good minutes into your legs, working on your own game, working as a cohesive unit, getting your team structure. Um, so the bonding and the, 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 the playing side uh, go hand in hand, but uh, for me, the most important bit is getting it right together on the pitch. Mentioned that. What about results? We saw in Austria, we had a tough first game against Slavia Prague. They were very advanced and ahead of us in pre-season schedule, but that was a good workout. Then we had the, the second game against Steyr, which we picked up the result in the end. Sinclair got his first goal in front of the QPR fans, which was a nice moment for him. Then we come back to the UK, we have the Wimbledon game, the Reading game, and finally the Oxford game. A mixed bag, is that a fair reflection? Yeah. And we're talking, obviously, after the disappointing, everyone was disappointed after the Oxford game, yeah. but what's the importance of results in pre-season? I think they're very important. Uh, I listen to a lot of managers saying they're not but I believe they are because we'll come back to what we endured, if that's the right word, on, on Saturday. That just puts you on the back foot. It puts everyone on the back foot. So I think you use uh, pre-season, as I say, to get your cohesion, to work individually, to make sure you, first and foremost, the players have got a responsibility. They have to be ready. That's their responsibility. That's not the coaches. That's not the fitness coach, anything. They're guided, but the players have to be ready. No one needed to tell me come the first game of the season, if I was ready or not, I would know. And if I didn't feel ready in the pre-season games, I'd be doing something about it myself, with the coaches, with whoever you had to, um, had to work on. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's really important sort of time of the season. The lads who've missed a bit of it through injury, um, you know, they're probably playing a little bit of catch up because I believe sometimes you miss a a large chunk of pre-season. Do you ever get it back? Not quite sure, but you, you are playing catch-up. So the importance of results, um, I might be a bit old school, I find very, very important. So if you look at the pre-season, first game was always going to be a tough against I When I saw the fixture, I thought, you know what, they, they're quality opposition. That's going to be a real tough one, and that's going to be even tougher because it's your first game where you've just done your week of, you know, testing where you are, you're starting to get your endurance, you're starting to, uh, so that was always going to be difficult. Um, 
I think it's fair to say they won't, they ran out comfortable winners. Um, I wasn't over there, but I, I saw I saw the games and the, the clips, etc., etc. Second game, um, I probably expected us to win, looking at the standard of the opposition. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Linden gets tucks away a penalty, and uh, delighted to see Sinclair uh, score because. Um, Somehow bundled the ball over the line, shall we say. We don't know what area of the body it came off, but... It doesn't matter. Strikers, uh, you know, I'll take 15 of them uh, this season. Um, so that one, then we come back. Yeah, you're still working towards uh, August the 5th, because that's, I've already said, that's the most important fixture uh, that you, you, you're aiming towards. We go to Wimbledon. Um, I was away. Uh, I didn't see it, but again... I think uh, certainly the first half, I'm, I'm told we played quite well. Uh, Linden puts us ahead, play some nice stuff, a couple of nice moves, uh, etc. Typical pre-season, lots of changes made and the game falls away a little bit. They get back into the game, but again, a useful workout. Then we went to Redden behind closed doors, training ground, three half hours. I think you probably sense what I'm saying here, so for me, those type of games, there's a purpose, but they're not really... Testing you, bringing that competitive edge. Yeah, that I, I always, I look, I look back when I played, you know, I used to, I used to thrive on the crowd. Um, and I've done games behind closed doors at training grounds and there's something used to be lost with me. I don't know if that makes sense or if, um, you haven't got the adrenaline rush of the, of the, of the, the stadium, your preparation's not, where it probably needs to be. Well, put it this way: I went, to, I went to Reading, and you know the lads are getting their strappings outside the dressing rooms. They're getting their pre-match rubs outside the dressing rooms. There's a, there's a feel of it, uh, almost like a training exercise. And maybe that's what it was: three half hours, loads of changes. Um, so other than minutes in the legs, I don't think you can read too much into that game, um, if you like. Uh, but we won. You know, Charlie Coleman gets a, what I say, he's a striker's goal. You know, it looks like it's a tap in, but he's on the move when Cross comes in from Arba. Linden gets the first contact. Charlie's on the move inside the six yard box, gets his finish. That'll do him the world of good. Um, Is there a couple of players this year? You mentioned Charlie Coleman that I could name a few younger players that are coming through. Is this their year to really get a grasp and really? Claim their stake to be in the team. Well, I think it has to be. You know, you 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 talk about young players, and they're young in terms of experience in games. But if you're looking at age-wise, they're not young anymore. So um, without putting players under too much pressure, I think it's I think it's a big season where some of them have actually got to step up and you know start influencing games at the level that we're playing. So uh, so yeah, but delight to see Charlie score. Taylor Richards got a header almost the last touch of the game to, to round it off. That, that should do him the world of good as well because he had a frustrating season last year with his, his injuries and his lack of appearances. Um, so now he can he kick on and make a, uh, make a good season for us and for him because he has potential. Um, and then the trip to Osh Oxford, do we quickly brush over it and try and move on as swiftly as possible? Because it was a disappointing afternoon, wasn't it? everyone involved it was a huge it was a hugely disappointing afternoon um you know i i went full of optimism i wanted to see us in a in a proper game i'm saying on commentary you know we're a week away are we ready um what do we look like as a team and i think everyone went away a little bit not a little bit deflated from from the manner of the performance certainly the result um Fans on silly, they weren't happy with what they saw. I'm saying on commentary, manager, head coach himself used the words, it's unacceptable. Um, and when he says things like, we got outrun and outfought, you probably don't want to hear that a week before the season. But if it's going to come, it's come. Hopefully it'll be addressed um, this week. There'll probably be some stern words said, I would have thought, uh, and I would have hoped. Because, uh, as I say, we're now playing for real in four or five days' time, and uh, we need to be we need to be ready, and we need to be a hell of a lot better than what we showed at Oxford, albeit in a pre-season friendly. No, 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 no. We 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 went with a, a strong team, 
uh, unfortunately lost Jimmy. And I'm not sure as I'm speaking to you this morning what the extent of that is, but that's a, that was a big, big blow. Um, so we wish Jimmy well. But uh, as I say, put that behind us. We need to be better. And uh, we go again on Saturday. And one thing that's been consistent throughout pre-season was the support from the fans. And once again, we're going to Watford. It's only a, it is a local derby, but we'll be making the trip to Hertfordshire. Packed out away end. The support is going to be electric. As, as it always is, and that's one constant that we can not rely on, but be proud of. Like, we've hard back the last season a, a couple of times, and I don't want to keep, but the one constant uh, real plus of last year was the, the, the support of our fans. I thought they were brilliant home. You know, attendances were up. I thought the volume they the, the got behind the team, uh, certainly in difficult times, they stayed with the team. Uh, away support was always brilliant, you know, and it's, let's face it, it's not cheap to go and watch football anymore. Um, you know, there was rail strikes, etc, etc, but we, our fans, found a way to get there and get behind the team. And, you know, I'll just say thanks, thanks to our fans for that. We're going to need you again, um, more so than ever this season. Get behind us, stay with the team, and let's see where we go. As I mentioned, Watford kicks off the campaign. Quite a tough start, isn't it, to the season? But if there's anything that we can take, it's our recent record. Any confidence we can take, it's our recent record from our trips to Vicarage Road. We were fortunate enough to be at the one behind closed doors when Albert scored. I was the only person behind that goal. I was gutted. I was the only person, really. <laughs> Very fortunate, but gutted. And then the year after, Albert managed to do it again, but this time able to enjoy the celebrations with the fans. Third time lucky. <laughs> Well, let's hope so. Um, let's really hope so. I think the last two visits, you mentioned one behind closed doors. I think Charlie and Alba got the goals. Uh, great win. Couldn't celebrate with the fans. Last year, early in the season, some was out. Thought we played really, really well against a good, powerful, strong, athletic Watford team. You know, Ilias, a little bit of fortune with his first goal, gets a big deflection. Second goal, like Chris scores, I thought was a brilliant team goal. You know, where there's three or four players uh, involved, we go from one end of the pitch to the other. Then Albert gets the uh, the all-important one and goes and celebrates with the the thousands of QPR fans. And you know what? I would love to see that happen again on uh, on Saturday. Um, but that was then. We have to go again. We have to perform. And we have to go and get a result. I think that's the perfect way to wrap it up, Andy. Thank you as always. It's been a bit of pleasure and join us every week on the Rangers Report as we'll be bringing you an insight into life into W12. We'll be talking QPR, we'll be talking football, everything that's happening. Hopefully it's a positive season, optimism as we head to Vicarage Road. So come on yours. Yeah.